In my macroeconomics class, I explain to students that there are two main models uh, or perspectives on the macroeconomy, the classical model and the Keynesian model. The classical model has some basic assumptions. The supply side of the market creates its own demand. All markets clear, meaning that prices and wages are so flexible that they can move up or down, uh, therefore eliminating any surpluses of supply or shortages of supply. The conclusion of the classical model is that markets work best when they're totally or nearly free of government intervention. Government should keep its hands off the economy. Classical macroeconomists believe that if the economy has a recession, the economy will eventually fix itself over the long run. The Keynesian model also has some basic assumptions. The demand side of the market is what motivates sellers to supply products. Prices and wages are not flexible. Instead, they're sticky. For example, gas prices go up quickly, but they come down very slowly. Sticky prices means that surpluses and shortages can persist. Uh, an example of a surplus of supply in, in the labor market is unemployment. The more people want jobs than employers are uh, willing to hire. So the conclusion of the Keynesian model is that the private sector economy can get stuck uh, in a recession, not able to get itself out. So Keynesian macroeconomists believe that if the economy has a recession, the government can play a role in getting the economy to grow again. I tell my students that there is a close connection between macroeconomics and politics. I don't pick sides, but I do explain how the two interact. You can learn how to use macroeconomics in your work life and in your life as a citizen. Where there's a Wilmington, there's a way.